Winning with wisdom is part six. And then the subtopic is wisdom for healthy living. Wisdom for what? Everybody wants to enjoy health. Nobody in his right senses celebrates sickness. Nobody will ever say, I love to be sick. Sickness affects every aspect of human endeavor. Your work, even your commitment to God will be affected because you can't come to church the way you should come. That's why when God was bringing Israel out of Egypt, he said, he brought them with silver and gold and not one was feeble amongst them. Today marks the end of poverty and sickness in your life. So you are born again to enjoy sound health and wealth. He said, I wish above all that may prosper and be healthy, even as your soul prosper. So God is saying, this is my wish for you, but you determine it with the level of your understanding of God's word. Sound health is your portion, but you need to have understanding to enjoy it. Is somebody get what I'm here? You need it. Because if you don't have knowledge, you may think that what the world is going through is right. Today there are so many suicides, mental cases, organ failures, strange illnesses of all kinds, but they are not our portion and they will not be our portion. Amen. Why you need wisdom is because if you know what to do, you will not be a victim of what is happening in the world. Wisdom is seeking, acquiring, and doing the knowledge of God's word. Wisdom is having the courage to act on and follow what the world says. Wisdom is knowledge of the right way, going the right way, and at the right time. It is the right application of God's word you hear. That's wisdom. What is health? Health is general physical state of being. Sound bodily, mentally, and emotionally. With absence of illnesses, injuries, and impairments. Yes, it's good to have miracles of healing, but it's better to know how to live in health. In a deep study on medical healing, man became sick for the first time because man committed sin. If there was no sin, there wouldn't have been miracles. Sin was the reason why miracle came, because Adam was not supposed to be sick. The reason God had to introduce miracles is because man committed sin. Before Adam, there was no need for miracles because there was no need for sickness. Miracles began when man fell. And Jesus came to restore us back to the state where man fell. There was no need for miracles because it was created not to be sick. So miracles started when man fell. Was there a miracle in the time of Adam? It doesn't need miracle because there was no need for miracle. It was not sick. Sin brought sickness. And Jesus came to restore us back to righteousness. So I came to announce to every sick, be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. When it hurts. The time is coming and it has come when nobody will be sick in the church. Amen. Not one. He said not one person was feeble. In the Old Testament, and with a better covenant. So not one of us will be sick in the name of Jesus. Amen. Is it possible? Yes, it's possible. For the entire church to be healthy. Possible. Very. A man called E.W. Kenyon passed the church for 25 years and nobody died. So it's possible for the church to live in health. It's possible. That man taught on new creation. He's the father of new creation. Nobody will teach new creation without referring to EWK. Can a Hagen built on his own teaching? Now hear this and hear me well. I said some reasons why you need the wisdom of God for healthy living. I said your body needs to glorify God. Some wisdom keys for assessing healthy living. Number one, you have to have consistent word intake. Quality word worth. Consistent quality word intake. You keep eating the word. And I said minimum is five. I shared a testimony which was shared on Sunday. 
a young man had tuberculosis, said he was drying up, and somebody told him to come to Salvation Ministries. He came and heard me teaching that read the Bible, and you will remain healthy. He said he began to read five chapters without anybody praying for him. Tuberculosis left, and he has regained his body. The more you eat God's word, the healthier you become. So eat God's word. And I said, be conscious to renew your mind. You become to do what? Renew your mind. Agree with the word of God. Stop thinking things contrary to the word of God. Don't believe that sickness is of God. Some people say, God is teaching me a lesson through sickness. No. And then number three, discard negative emotions. Discard what? Discard negative emotions. And I said, what are the negative emotions? I tell a few of them. I said, one, anxiety and worries. And then the B, I said, bitterness and C, envy. But right under that, I'll be looking at, there are three negative spiritual emotions that has adverse effect on human health. I'm going to take three of them. Three spiritual what? Emotions that have adverse on human health. They are not just rooted in the mind, they are also in the spirit. And that one, number one, is unforgiveness. Is what? Unforgiveness. If you don't forgive, you'll be sick. Refusing to forgive people who have wronged you can affect your health. It's dangerous to tie people in your heart. Lose them. Do what? You have tied your mother-in-law before your chest pain you. Lose her. <laughs> before your chest pain you, do what? Lose your mother-in-law so your chest will not pain you. <laughs> when you don't forgive, it's that try to drink poison and expect somebody else to die. The person you are not forgiving does not even remember. You are here killing yourself. My friend, forgive the person. <laughs> do what? Forgive the person. He said, me, I can't forgive her. If you go to hospitals, you find that women are more than men. But women don't forgive. Not in this church. <laughs> women don't forgive. Now, how you know that you have not forgiven? Let somebody who has problem with you come on the same road. You dodge. You have not forgiven the person. <laughs> if she, if, check women. If a woman that she has called is coming this way, she will be singing and go this way and then go this way. Make sure that two of them don't meet. He said, why don't you want to pass there? I don't want trouble. <laughs> and then at that moment, she will be complaining of her waist pain. The waist is paining you because you have just not forgiven that. Forgive us our trespasses, not so as we forgive those who. And if God does not forgive you, will the sickness not remain? Thank you. Number two, Ruth. Roman figure two is fear. Anything you are afraid of, you become a victim of it. In Proverbs 29, verse 25, it said, The fear of a man bringeth what? A snare. But also, put his trust in the Lord shall be saved. Job was a perfect man. What brought Job to destruction? Fear. All the sickness of Job came through what? Fear. Job 3.25. Give no room to fear. Otherwise, you'll be struck with sickness. Some of you, the attack you have on your health now is fear. So see the eye is getting red. If it's getting red, you do read it. Just like faith provokes divine intervention, fear attracts the devil. Faith attracts God, fear attracts Satan. And Satan so is the one behind all sicknesses. Once fear sets in, you become a victim of what you are afraid of. He said, You have not received the spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1 7. Walk tall with confidence, destroy fear and live healthy. So I hear. Let me say this. Fear is the access code Satan uses into any life. In telephone, they say the code of America is plus one. The code of Satan's access is fear. You know, if you want to call America anywhere in the world, you put plus one. If you want to call Nigeria, plus two, three, four. If you want to call Satan, plus fear. Plus what? 
you get him straight. He will just come. He can't call America not putting plus one. That's their own code. From any other part of the world, you must put what? America and Canada. Go call Nigeria plus two, three. To just call Satan. Don't bother. Just put plus. Yeah. Satan, you get him straight. You just ask. It's one dial. <laughs> Direct <laughs> dial plus fear. So avoid fear. Avoid what? Avoid fear. Fear is a spirit. It's not a psychological state. He said, God has not given you the spirit of fear. So fear is a spirit. And I cast it out in the name of Jesus. Amen. There are some people, even the way you touch your baby, that's how the temperature went up. They do like this. Ah, ah, this boy is like fever. How do you know it's fever? They do like this. The hand the lawyer you're touching the boy is enough to give him fever. You do like this. That hand is too much now. Too much. <laughs> So, you're already afraid. He said, Gino, are you okay? He said, Mommy, I'm okay. He said, it's like a running temperature. <laughs> are you a doctor now? <laughs> number three, number four, three is sin. Number three is what? Every unrighteousness is sin. Sin carries with it the consequences that destroys your health. In Proverbs 3, 7 and 8, contemporary English version. Contemporary what? Don't ever think that you are wise enough, but respect the Lord and stay away from evil. This will make you healthy and you will feel strong. There are so many who are sick today because of sinful activities in their lives. Immorality has destroyed so many people. Most contracted sexually transmitted diseases came from what? Immoral acts. Is that not true? Uh -huh. So sin and some in a bit of hiding it they have stroke. They're going to depression. There are some people who cannot tell their wives that they are sick. They cannot tell their husband they are sick. Is even to death, you will not die. So stop sin to live healthy. Sin is the root cause of... When Jesus cured a man, he said, go and sin no more. So sin is the root of sickness. When sin goes, sickness will go. Go and sin no more. So every time you sin, you're looking for sickness. Because the root of sickness came from where? Sin. Hmm? Okay, you are smoking. Yet they say God heal you. Yeah. He said in our church, when they sing, I come before. <laughs> <laughs> you are not taking cigarette. He <laughs> said, My chest is paining me. Pray for me, eh? The thing is paining you because of the thing you are putting in your mouth. Uh, even the doctors wrote that the general soldier general says smoking is dangerous to your health. You saw it. Even on the pack of the cigarette, they said smoking is dangerous to your health. And I put it to your mouth. <laughs> he said, I believe God. God will heal my chest. <laughs> I have always said, if God wanted you to smoke, would I put your nose at the back? Because your nostrils is in front. Your exhaust of your car, where is it? Back or front? Back. So God did not put this thing to be for smoking. He put it, if you wanted to smoke, the nose would have been where? At the back. Some people smoke, smoke, smoke. They say, Pastor, you see, it's pending me. My chest is pending me. A young man came to my office. He told me he was making a guy. He said, Pastor, you know, I've gone to places to stop this cigarette. And I don't know why he doesn't want to stop. I just had to talk. I, I saw that he was not ready to stop. He was doing like a guy. I said, you know what? Go and smoke more. <laughs> <laughs> he could not walk out of my office. I saw that he was doing it like, you know, like pride. He said, I've gone to pastors to pray for me and I've done everything. And I saw that he was not ready to stop the cigarette. He was doing like, I said, you know what? Smoke more. <laughs> he could not walk out of the office. He stood oh, He said, ah, why now? I said, smoke. <laughs> but do you know the funny thing? That was the thing that made him to stop the cigarette. <laughs> Don't justify any bad thing. Don't justify what? Yeah, I'm not going to feel the way girls love me. Are you the only one? <laughs> so the way they love me, everywhere I go, go, go they don't allow me to rest, they lie. <laughs> they will allow you to rest. <laughs> if you two allow them to rest. <laughs> it's not true. I told a young man, he said, look at the phone, he said, ah, say, Papa, my phone, they keep on it, I say, you enjoy it. He said, how now? I said, can't you change your number? 
He says, Sister Papa, every day this young girl will be sending me tests. I don't look at him. I say, My friend, change your number. You enjoy what you're doing. <laughs> Can you change your number? They worry you like that. Do you know some people like it? That girls are talking to them. They like it. They even show their wives. He says, This girl, I just talked to you. <laughs> The man enjoys it. He does what? He enjoys it. He enjoys it. It's not that they don't. He enjoys it. <laughs> he likes it. He likes it. Not that the guests are after him. They're after him because of something. Have you seen any girl after a man who is poor? I do not have known that all men who say women like them, they have small money. So it's the money. Not that the women love you. Be broke if watch what if any man will love you. <laughs> I don't know how some men who don't have money. The women turn their face away. They say, "Don't oh, my poor man." <laughs> because the man cannot do anything. Poor man. Have you seen any handsome beggar before? Very handsome man. They say, "Is a beggar." <laughs> when they put handsome beggar, they just uh, forget the man. They say, "Some very handsome young boys, no money in their pockets, poor them. Don't mind that boy, useless boy." Let me define a transport beggar. They take <laughs> Somebody, somebody was taking hot, hot drink in the village. He looked at him and said, do you are doing it? It's as if there's bone inside. <laughs> you know, when they drink hot, they make... <laughs> he, said, he said, when you're drinking it, you're happy, bone dead inside. <laughs> My friend, allow you to... That thing is evil. It's evil spirit. <laughs> if you want to be healthy, serve God. Do what? Serve God. That shall serve the Lord your... It shall take sickness from you. Exodus 23, 25, 26. Those who serve God don't serve sickness. So all of you serving God be healed. One of the rewards of service is sound health. Sound what? One of the elders in this church came to this church newly and said, he had asthma, and I said, sir, serve God. From service, asthma left. So if you want to live a healthy life, what do you do? Your service is what to make you live a healthy life. Is that true? John 15, 1 to 2. Every branch you made that bearing fruit, it take it, every branch you made that bearing fruit, the project that may bring forth worth. As long as you're useful in the kingdom, God will keep keeping you healthy. Eat healthy. Eat what? Food is meant for strength, nourishment, and restoring energy. There are people who eat as if they're in competition. <laughs> they're what? <laughs> as if they're in competition. You know that you're getting no base. You are saying, I'm trying to work on my, my size, and then you are taking burger. <laughs> I'm trying to check my weight. And I don't want to eat much. Then you don't eat in the morning, you don't eat in the afternoon, but when you eat in the evening, you combine the three. <laughs> you combine the whole three. No, now. Uh, how can you take shawarma and say you want to go down? <laughs> you are taking pizza, shawarma, burger. You say, I want to reduce my weight. Take ice cream. You cream your life. Oh. Mm? Your teeth is falling off, yet you're saying, I like chocolate. You know, I like chocolate. <laughs> I believe God, things will get better. But give me chocolate. Your teeth has turned upside down. Chocolate. You have pulled the whole molas. You have said, <laughs> my friend, calm down. No. That's not how to live healthy. That's not how you what? You look at your body system. There are people who eat beans in the evening. Their chest pains them. Don't eat it. It's not prayer. Look at your body system. Eat food that you know is good for your Body. I was studying and I discovered something. I've shared it before. Do you know if you want to live healthy, the food you eat matters a lot? I was studying the book of Daniel. I've shared it in the church before. I said, why did Daniel said he will not eat the king's meat in the palace? And the Holy Ghost gave me deep understanding. In the palace, every palace, they take alcohol. Every palace. If you go to a government house anywhere, they take the best of alcohol. So in the king's palace, they have the red wine of the alcoholic wine type. If you go to anywhere in the palace. 
So the other boys were drinking that red wine that has alcohol. Because in the palace, they take the best of alcohol. So Daniel understood that. He said, I'm not going to take this to defile my body. So give me any other kind of thing that does not contain this alcohol and watch if I will not be healthier than these people. So you can't be drinking alcohol and be smoking and think that you live in health. You eat food that you know that contrary, forget it. You can't drink red wine. Let me be raw. And live in health. He says it's good for your heart. Then why are you breaking down? Then everybody with heart disease would have been taking red wine. I have not had one person who was cured with red wine. <laughs> Those are nonsense. They are what? Just say you like to drink. Don't deceive yourself. He says it's good for stomach sick. How well, many of you have you taken stout and your stomach got healed? So watch what you eat. Watch what you want. Eat. You want to live in health? Mark what you eat. Daniel was not taking it. And he was very healthy. You remain healthy. Mm? In Daniel chapter 1, you see 12 to 16. Stop eating junk food. Stop eating what? Junk food. In the name of class, you want to destroy yourself? Be moderate in your eating. Watch what you... Every fat person likes food. I've not seen one fat person who does not love food, not one. Don't say, me, I don't like food. It's just in my body, it's a lie. All fat people like food. <laughs> they like, no, I've not seen one fat person who does not like food. <laughs> if you want to know, just say, you will eat today. They say, you want to kill me? want to kill me? <laughs> There's a small girl abroad. I prayed for them, children. When I saw her again, she has increased again. I said, she's wrong. I said, you come to a gym with me on Saturday and you eat two o'clock. Gym like this. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you come to the gym with me because I have a complete gym in my house. I said, you gym with me, but you eat for the first meal. Are you tired? By two. She said, no. <laughs> she reacted on the spot. She said, no, two o'clock for what? <laughs> if you see her, she's the fattest girl in this church. <laughs> that girl is fat. Fat. My, my leg as adult. It's her arm. I'm not joking. No. This is my leg. It's her arm. A girl less than 12. This is my leg as a whole. It's her arm. She's wearing a uniform that can swallow me. <laughs> Big. So I said, and I know it's food. Food. I just prayed for her after service. Because at that age, she has BP. At that age. Why won't you? Fat. The whole neck is swallowed like this. <laughs> Food. I tell her, I said, you will not eat too much. You come and stay with me. Say, no. <laughs> I said, this beginner. I love her a lot, but not the food. <laughs> not the food. Be moderate in your, in your eating. Hmm? They are putting seven cubes of sugar in one teacup. I said, Father, I know that there will be no diabetes. <laughs> there will be no sicknesses. No sugar disease. I pour nothing oil inside. <laughs> <laughs> My friend, that is not wisdom. That is not. That's not wisdom. Don't hide under the cover of a half feet and eat everything and endanger your life. Amen. Watch what you, watch what you eat. Watch what you eat. Oh. Are you get what I'm saying? I told them to change my pattern. Everything, watch what you eat. They were giving me food to 10 to 10, and I discovered that the stomach was coming out. So I told them, I said, from this week, give me food early. I was eating to 10. And when you eat to 10, you know exercise. You go and sleep. The teacher, boom, before you know it, the balance brought forward. <laughs> <laughs> you know what the balance brought forward? This thing now. Not the women own or the men own. Women are their own is pregnancy. Men own is paderiam. <laughs> men is what? Men are also pregnant with paderiam. Women are pregnant with children, but men are pregnant with it. And when it's too big, you won't see the button under. You just do like this. You won't see the belt. If like, like, you know way. If you want to buckle your, your, your shoe, <laughs> it's fight. <laughs> you, you, when you do like this, the belt won't allow you to buckle your shoe. Calm down, my friend. Amen. 
Look at First Corinthians 10, 31. Contemporary English version. So when you eat or drink or do anything else, always do it to honor God. Even the Almighty God said be moderate. Be what? Moderate. moderate. So decide to stop that way of eating. Fellowship addiction. Fellowship what? Addiction. Fellowship has a way of making you strong. Psalm 84, 7. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them appeared before God. And continuous fellowship strengthens your health. Strengthens your health. Most of you, as you came for fellowship now, you hear God's word, you take communion, strength is coming. So keep coming to church. The more you come, the healthier you become. So I hear. Number seven, engage in bodily exercise. Engage in what? It profited little, but that little thing is very important. Do some stretching, walking, jogging, push-ups, sit-ups, name them. Hmm? To keep yourself, I'm a very vast learner. I was into a documentary. They said, once you're above 40, forget all the supplements they're telling you. The two things that will keep you healthy is vegetables and exercise. Once a man or woman is above 40, all those taking drugs, forget it. The two things medically that will keep you fit is your physical exercise and vegetables. Are you hearing me now? Not all this... Uh, I'm taking supplement before you supplement your life. You don't. My friend, engage your bodily exercise. Do some exercise. You don't have to have a gym in your house. In your compound, walk small. Walk down, come up, walk down, go front, come down, go front, come down, burn off the whole thing. All the calories are just there. Quack them. You eat garden in the morning, eat panayam in the afternoon, eat lolo in the evening, you go to bed, you just lie down, no exercise. The following day again, you start again. One, two, three, you lie down again. The following day again, you start. And some of you, when you sit down to eat, heavy, or cassava, cassava, the end point, carbohydrate, in different uniforms. You take lolo in the morning, garden in the afternoon, starch in the night. The end point, carbohydrate, sugar. When you give your wife give you, you say, well, I just want you to give me. <laughs> you take two wraps. Two what? Two wraps. You press, you press it. <laughs> you take a tama. You take like all oil, oil, palm oil, full everywhere. You take palm oil, one side is where? One side. No way, you are not burning anything. Off. I sat down. Me, yeah, anywhere. If you go to Europe, out of ten, you see only one fat. If you go to America, out of ten, nine are fat. <laughs> Ask me why. In Europe, people trek. In America, nobody treks. In Europe, you see very rich men trek on the streets. But when you go to America, they enter their car. Woo. So every ten people, nine are obese, one slim. It's the opposite in Europe. So you take some things from here, throw some things away. Do exercise. This is where people are getting fat here too. Very fat. <sighs> <sighs> Do what? Exercise. If you don't have anywhere, go to Oakman. The company is big enough. But I tell you, trek around the cathedral. All the fats you have will burn off. Just go around. Trek. Now they've done Ring Road. So just trek. Say, I'm a member of the church. I'm trekking. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> but by the time you trek around that cathedral, believe me, once every week, you won't be fat. God bless you. Do exercise, though. Finally. First Timothy 4.8. 1 Timothy 4.8. For, For bull exercise profited. They, somebody asked me, say, do you do exercise? Five services, is this small exercise? <laughs> do you know how many times I walk here like this? <laughs> Talk to you. Calculate the trek and I trek. <laughs> That's why me, I don't have any problem because on Sunday, it's composite exercise. <laughs> For the something minutes, every service, I'm, doing, I'm talking, I can't start one place now, we're moving like this. <laughs> I'm burning off something. So, so don't follow me. My only show. 
four hours minimum exercise on Sundays. Thursdays, one hour plus. <laughs> See me, I've been walking up and down. So my friend, do exercise. Finally, talk health. Talk what? Proverbs 12, verse 18. It said, there is that speaketh rashly, like the person of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. What you say is important when it comes to your health. It takes the tongue to enjoy health. Speak life, don't speak dead. Say positive things you want to see. Your mouth is the gateway to sickness. Your mouth is the gateway to health. It's the gateway to strength or weakness. It's the gateway to life or death. So mind what you say. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Your mouth is the gateway to strength or weakness. It's the gateway to health or what? Or sickness. It's the gateway to life or death. So mind what you say. My body is paining me. It will start paining you. And the whole atmosphere looks like it's very cold. Even if you are not cold, you'll be cold. I'm feeling somehow, it's like my temperature is rising. Even if it was not to rise, it will not rise. So if you think that you're making in Jackery, you know, I, I'm feeling, I'm feeling, it's like I have flu. I have flu. Who gave you flu? Where did you buy it? <laughs> I have. Which market did you buy it? Proverbs 16. 23, 24. The heart of the wise instructed his mouth and added learning to his lips. Look at verse 24. Pleasant words as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and held to the bones. Begin to speak right words. Tell your neighbor, my body will no longer accommodate sickness. No more sickness. No affliction in my life. I choose to magnify God over sickness. You shall have whatsoever. Mark 11 to 3. Talk to the mouth of infirmity and tell it to go. It will go. Stop discussing sickness. Discuss healing. Watch what you say because Proverbs 6 verse 2. In fact, if you want to learn wisdom out the book of the month is Proverbs. Thou are snared with the words of what? The mouth. Thou are taken with the words of the mouth. To remain healthy. Talk health always. I cannot be sick. I can't die. My body is getting better. My strength is being restored. That's how you talk. Your body should work. I know my strength is being restored. My body is getting better. Don't say, ah, if I don't talk like that, they won't pity me. What do you want? Pity you. Or life. Some of the problems you have today is the amount of what you said yesterday. The way you're looking is like, are you okay? You look like this. You know, in our church, they say, we shouldn't say you are not okay, but come. <laughs> you know, I can tell you the truth. I'm not okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that thing you have said, even if you are to be okay, you will not be okay again. Life and death are where? Now, put this into practice. It may look simple, but do you know the entire body is controlled by the words of your mouth? This entire body is controlled by what? To tell you how words are powerful. Who has pain? Who has physical pain? You have physical pain? You have pain. Who is that? Who has pain? Now, look at, to tell you words are very powerful. I want to tell you how words are. Where do you have the pain? On your waist. Now, see how powerful words are. Pain is in his body. Pain is what? Now, tell, let me tell you how words are very powerful. Give me the microphone. Watch what will happen. Do you believe God's order by stripes you are healed? Yes, do you I believe? believe? You yes, believe. believe? Do you believe himself took your infirmities? Yes, I believe. You believe? Now, I say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Just watch. I won't, I won't pray. I want you to demonstrate how words are powerful. Say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Say, no. I don't have pain. I don't have pain. Pain leave my body. Pain leave my body. Now. Now, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, you'll be shocked. Do something you could not do. You'll be shocked. What will happen? <laughs> now, listen. I'm going to demonstrate how powerful words are. If he says he has pain, that pain will come back. Satan will attack him with the words he speaks. 
If right now he says, do you know, sir, I have pain, immediately this pain that left will come back. It's okay now. <laughs> it's okay, wait. Are you shocked? Eh? Yes, sir. You are shocked? Yes, sir. It was very painful? Since morning, I've been battling with it, sir. And it left. Yes, now, sir. I didn't pray for him. It's from his words, the pain left. So also, with his words, pain can come back. If he goes now and says, do you know that pain was terrible, I still have it. The pain will come. Boom. The pain left because the mouth is like, if that shall say to this mouth, it is if that shall discuss the mountain. If that shall say, it is a if that shall discuss. What we do is to discuss problems. We don't speak to problems. God never told you to describe problems. He says, speak to problems. But you describe problems to magnify them for the enemy to attack. You don't describe problems. You speak to problems. You speak to mountains. You speak to sickness. You don't discuss sickness. Do you want to live in health? Never speak the problem. Speak to the problem. Either you're speaking to the problem or you're speaking about the problem. Most of us speak about the problem. We don't speak to the problems. Do you know things are tough? You are speaking about the problem. God never says speak about the problem. He says speak to the problem. There was darkness. God said let there be light. In the midst of challenges, speak. I can't be barren. Can't have pain in my body. Pain leave. And the pain will go. Oh, this pain is terrible. It will increase. If it was not terrible, night will be terrible. It's unbearable. So if you are moving before, you will sit down on a wheelchair. It's from your mouth you are snared. This pain is unbearable. So before you could bear it, now it will be unbearable. So they will carry wheelchair and carry you. It's not the devil that attacked you. He attacked you because of your mouth. So speak the word only. That's why the servant said, speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. And the word was the one that spoke. Now you have the word. Rise to your feet. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So go and put the wisdom of God's word to practice. Everything we have said, put it to practice. Physically put it to what? You will never hear from my mouth, I'm sick. Never. 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 You will never hear it. Nothing will make me say I'm sick. No way. Can't say that. Sick of what? Hmm? Even when you see something physical with your eye, I said, Do you have cold? I said, No. <laughs> if you see me still say it's like you have cold, I tell you no. But if I say I have, the cold will increase. And if I say no, the cold will go. When the young men of God say live in health, they speak the word for those things not to stay in their bodies. They will sometimes they'll come to show sign. It's the words you speak that make them. To go. So mind what you say. Lord, I've heard all this. I'll put them to what? Practice. Go ahead and speak to God. I've heard all this. I'll put them to practice. I've heard all this. I'll put them to practice. I'll put God's word to practice in the name of Jesus. I'll put God's word to practice in the name of Jesus. In the name I put God's word to practice. The world is full of unrest. Money has failed. Human intellect is not working. You need Jesus. In him you will find peace and rest. Jesus said, Come to me all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Those who are not going to say, Lord Jesus, 
Come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose from the dead to save me. Right now with my mouth, I declare you Lord over my life. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name. Thank you for watching. To watch our live services, visit our website at www.snhos.org. If you want us to pray or counsel you, please call. You can also stay connected through any of these our social media accounts. This message is brought to you by Salvation Ministries Home of Success.